topic uh, to take part in it. Um, today's session is going to be about how to accelerate the SDGs in Asia Pacific through community driven impact investment. So just to recap, um, we are a satellite event of Impact the Future, and um, we will be joined uh, by a number of speakers. My name is Charlotte. I am the impact manager here at Impact Collective. I'm also the sustainable innovation officer at the World Federation of UN Associations. I'm joined by Marta, Jonathan, and Uni, who will be giving um, their uh, presentations about themselves a little later. Uh, before we go into that, I would like to give you all a little background information on what Impact Collective is. Um, just so that those of you joining uh, have a better understanding of where we're coming from and why we fit into this Impact the Future uh, mission. Uh, we are within the Decade of Action for the Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs. And um, with that, we'd like to invite anyone here to co-create the future with us. So um, we are going to be uh, giving a little recap of what our goals are. And then going into a couple of key questions around our topic, which is impact investing um, for the SDGs and particularly how to mobilize community to do so for more inclusive and diverse decision-making in the impact investing stage. So um, next slide, please. To start off with, Impact Collective is a community-driven investment and acceleration program for impact makers. Um, we are focusing on startups that are working around Asia Pacific, and our mission really is to enable those with great business potential to not only internalize an impact strategy, but also achieve a quantum jump towards smart and sustainable economic growth. We are here to help support uh, entrepreneurs and different stakeholders to accelerate the SDGs and really set the new standards for what it means to do business today. Our platform brings together a whole different uh, variety of stakeholders, which I'll be going into a little bit. But before that, I'd like to go into the three pillars of our program, which are on the next slide. So what makes us stand apart is that we are a program uh, that is by the Asia Pacific region for Asia Pacific. And uh, we have a variety of different partners. Uh, we support startups cross-border market exploration to build meaningful relationships and connections. We have a community, um, the Impact Collective community, which really plays a hands-all role during the entire acceleration program and process. Uh, this includes selecting participants uh, for the program and also weighing in on investment decisions. Um, our stakeholders are made up of investors. We have UN representatives, in particular UNDP and UNESCAP, which stands for the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. Um, they're based in Bangkok. And we have public sector networks of which we have uh, WIGO, the World Smart Sustainable Cities Organization that brings together over 200 plus mayors, uh, city mayors. We also have lots of industry experts and community organizers and impact enthusiasts. All of us uh, come together for the third pillar, which is impact. So we really help entrepreneurs to discover and communicate their impact strategies through the SDGs framework. As a global shared measurement, the SDGs were designed for and approved by governments. And they also contribute a global framework for measuring business contributions to society. So how companies can win with purpose. Startups that weave impact through their business models will be able to benefit uh, from uh, support, both coming from the public and private sector by aligning their impact metrics with the SDGs. So this is where we really come together. And um, could you go to the next slide, please? We have identified uh, six key things uh, themes, uh, which are priorities in Asia Pacific, uh, namely inclusive health and quality of life, circular economy and the future of waste management, sustainable agriculture and food, and green energy and the environment, digitalization for equal opportunities for all, and future of work and economic growth. All in all, um, these have been aligned with priorities from uh, 
like the smart city action plans within Asia Pacific. And we're really trying to accelerate uh, the SDGs in the context of cities as they relate also back to uh, urban rural uh, dynamics. And with that, uh, next slide, please. We all came together and created a framework uh, that would help us to assess what it means to do impact for us. And so uh, this includes weaving impact, not only through your business model, your product and your team and culture, but also looking how your impact that your company generates really helps to create systematic change, really helps to set the new standards for your industry. And a couple of key KPIs, which are on the next slide. Um, so this is just based on last year when we were launched, when we launched, we were very uh, lucky that in 2020, um, despite the, the global context, we were able to grow quite quickly. Um, we launched in the middle of the year and gained over a thousand members on the IC platform, which is blockchain powered, um, helps to accelerate 84 teams from 35 different countries. Um, you know, they averaged on, on general uh, monthly revenues of 75K US dollars and um, were considered for uh, investment opportunities that linked back to our impact collective fund worth 5 million US dollars. We also bring together 95 uh, industry experts last year, as well as 117 community judges. This year, we are bringing together uh, a smaller cohort of 45 impact makers because we really wanted to really uh, get to know each and every one of them. Uh, our community has grown to over uh, 1,500 community members and we invite all of you to join us. I think the links will be shared inside the chat, but for now, this is all the background information I'll be sharing on the program itself. Um, I invite Marta to stop sharing the slides and uh, so that we can see all of our beautiful faces. <laughs> And with that, I would like to uh, invite Marta first to present herself, then Jonathan, then Uni. Um, please go ahead and tell us who you are and what you do and why you joined Impact Collective. Marta, whenever you're ready. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Marta. I uh, am originally from Poland, but based for the last decade and a half in Korea. Uh, I am a community and ecosystem builder here in Korea involved in startups and various capability, mostly connecting uh, entrepreneurs with the right resources, with the right people. I run, uh, other than being part of Impact Collective, I also run uh, Korea's biggest international startup community called Seoul Startups. And uh, here in Impact Collective, I am the community lead, which shouldn't be too surprising. I am responsible of kind of managing the community, making sure everybody is on board, knows what's going on, knows what's doing, uh, knows what's happening. I joined um, Impact Collective uh, because I really believe in the message and the vision of this program. And I think, uh, first of all, I've, I feel very privileged that I'm part of such a wonderful community. But I also feel that we're doing something really important that will have an impact on our region uh, in the very near future. So that's Thanks, all. Marta. Thank you so much. Jonathan? Right. OK. Um, so thank you for inviting me, uh, Charlotte, Marta, and Yunel. Uh, so I'm Jonathan, or also Jody. Um, I come from operator background. Uh, I've been working in several industry verticals uh, with a couple of different startups, uh, mostly in impact space, so government technologies, climate space, uh, and several energy spaces. And I am right now in Impact Collect. Well, I'm currently also managing my own ventures called Ecosystem Venture Builder, and uh, or also acronym as XYZ. And I'm currently in Impact uh, Collective as expert judges um, on circular economy topics, and I'm actually coming to Impact Collective, or rather coming back. Uh, this is my second year in Impact Collective. After last year, I joined as the committee judges and I was surprised by the heat and also the passions of the community. And I wanted to be more involved. So that's why I come back the second year as the expert judges. So curiosity uh, led me here, but I guess the 
passions and consistency it makes me stay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Kayunia. Hi, everyone. Uh, very nice to meet you. I'm Yunia E, a partner of The Ventures, an early startup uh, investor based in Seoul uh, with over 100 portfolios so far. Also here at Impact Collective as one of the initiators of the program, uh, I'm happily building the new investment model uh, with great community members here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yuni. Yep, and just to recap, um, so my name is Charlotte. I am the Sustainable Innovation Officer at the World Federation of UN Associations. I'm also the Impact Manager at Impact Collective. And along with UNI, we were um, uh, one of the founding, founding organizers to come in and help build it. Um, we're coming in actually through our City Printers pr Initiative, which is a program that tries to find uh, innovative solutions created by impact makers on the ground to urban challenges. Uh, our main thing was that we saw the majority of population, currently half of the world population lives in cities, but cities only constitute two to 3% of land on earth. So it's a very, very concentrated area of, of uh, people that face a lot of challenges, right? They generate over 70% of greenhouse gas emissions and also generate over 80% of global GDP. And so there's a lot of opportunities around there to accelerate impact while also, um, you know, mobilizing the money that's coming in around this. And so that was our, our uh, big uh, problematic that we wanted to address. And thanks to Impact Collective, we're able to do this virtually in a number of different cities at the same time in Asia Pacific. So it's really accelerating it uh, through different uh, contexts and helping to create better ties between not only different sectors, so you know, public sector, private sector, investors, industry experts, entrepreneurs, impact enthusiasts, uh, people that potentially can become your future customers, uh, but also looking at how we can feed into our different programs and look at different city contexts. We're super lucky to have already worked with Singapore, Ho Chi Minh City, Seoul, and Bangkok, and we're looking to expand beyond that. And uh, yeah. For now, uh, I'm gonna keep it at that. Thank you everybody for giving your presentations. I would like to jump now into a couple of key questions around our key topic, which is accelerating the SDGs through community-driven impact investing. So as Uni said, this is, um, we are trying to pioneer a new investment model, right? Around democratic capital allocation, where we are really bringing in the voices of our community, um, which are on our blockchain uh, powered platform. Um, I believe that the link will be shared in the chat at some point. I invite all of you to check it out. We also have an application if you want to take part. Um, but yeah, all, all of this was uh, done with an idea of trying to connect us, especially in a time when we were very disconnected. I mean, the pandemic has shown that there are issues around um, resiliency of different industries, but because of this platform, we were actually able to connect and keep continuing, like keep doing our work and supporting teams and startups that are really trying to create impact in the region. So my first question um, to, uh, I think I'll address this one to uni actually, why is investment uh, an accelerating measure for the SDGs? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that's a, that, that is actually a very key topic of all our um, activities currently uh, happening in uh, Impact Collective. So, um, well, as a, as a venture capital investors, uh, we believe that, you know, uh, allocating the right capital into the right sector and uh, industry uh, will help uh, the world, um, you know, be uh, be the better, better future, uh, have it have the better future. Um, so that kind of like uh, our um, mission is actually well aligned with this uh, program. So um, the most powerful um, measure that we can take is actually, you know, um, handling the financial side. So um, 
mobilizing the capitals and mobilizing the people and mobilizing the power uh, into uh, the core um, SDG driven business model, then you know more innovations can happen and also that will drive um, bigger impact in our um, Asia Pacific region. Yeah. Thanks, Yuni. Uh, I agree. I mean, uh, I believe there's research already out um, by the Business and Sustainable Development Commission, which is the commission that helped to research around the SDGs and create baselines. Um, they said that there are about 12 trillion uh, US dollars worth of market opportunities in the four big tracks around the sustainable development goals. So that includes food and agriculture, cities, energies, and materials, and health and well-being. And so this, these four categories actually of, of um, innovation constitute currently 60% of the real economy. And that's a lot of money that can ta be tapped into and reoriented to not only generate uh, you know, profit, but do so while being mindful of people and the environment. Um, yeah, I don't know, does, uh, does maybe Marta or Jonathan, do you have anything to add on to that? If not, we can move on to the next question. Yeah, I think that's, that's quite clear already. I mean, capital is enabling uh, as far as we, can, we are concerned, right? So having more capital working for good um, and achieving that uh, sustainable development goals will definitely accelerate the progress of the achievement. We cannot just rely on government, definitely. They have limited mm -hmm. resources and budget. So that's where the private sectors can really oil that gears to get it going. Yeah, and we, we can take the opportunity to use platforms like this to actually influence governments and influence authorities to make the right, start making the right decisions that impact uh, the societies for the good, societies and the environment. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes. I think, it, oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> okay yeah no i was just gonna add that bottom-up approaches are are definitely um very important because people on the ground right people that are living the day-to-day -day lives and, and facing these challenges have a better idea of what solutions fit them best which is also why we thought this model would fit well because if it, you know when you are trying to identify a solution if you're the one that experiencing, you're the one that's experiencing the problem. You're more likely to know what you're looking for in a solution than if it was just like a uh, top bottom implementation. Uh, I think uh, government is is definitely extremely helpful um, in doing this and can take on a more uh, like reactive approach once they see the demand for it. You know, creating the the policy infrastructure around it and helping people uh, by creating support mechanisms so that we can flourish and really try to, you know, maximize uh, the impact that we're trying to generate. Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to add. I think this, uh, if you need, I, I don't know what you wanted to say, but this kind of leads back into the next question, which is, you know, what are the advantages of community driven investment over just conventional venture investment? Yeah, well, actually, that brings me the topic that we recently talked about, the systemic change. You know, so um, this uh, this capital allocation was kind of like a strategy movement from our fund side. And this community driven model is more like, a, you know, systemic change that we want to make. So uh, this um, impact investment is very early stage, especially in Asia. So um, we need to educate the, um, the, the, the uh, LPs, I mean, the investors, and also we need to educate the market and we need to educate the entrepreneurs and also we need to educate the consumers who actually, you know, um, uh, paying their, uh, uh, th their money into the startups products or services. So uh, for that, um, we definitely need this um, uh, collective kind of like a movement and also uh, give out our uh, voices in a better like systemic way. So that's why we brought out this community uh, angle into this uh, investment activity. So rather than you know, uh, having all the insights and having all the power just within some, some of the heads of the um, capital uh, 
capital um, power people, but then like we, we want to actually share all this process and progresses together with the community so that they can also learn and implement the learnings to their own business or to their own services and also on their living lives. So uh, that's why, you know, this community driven investment, investment model is really important, especially for the early startup um, uh, impact investing. Um, and also, as you know, uh, from the uh, entrepreneur's angle, um, well, the, the entrepreneurial journey is not a kind of like a short term race. It's a really, really a long term race that you have to focus on every different angles and you need to find out a lot of different supporters from different sectors and different uh, fields. So um, also for that, um, these entrepreneurs, they need the, the, the the communal support rather than just say, you know, a, one single side of the capital support only. So um, uh, for that also this uh, commu community driven investment, investment model is not only for a kind of like a financial support for the startups, but also they can create their own crew, their own royal fans and their own uh, close friends who can also, uh, you know, help out each other and also give out more um, different side of the impact to their own business as well. Thank you so much, Uni. Um, yeah, I, I think Marta wants to add on to that. Go ahead. No, I think it, um, I just wanted to kind of expand on what, what Uni was saying that this is pretty much like a dis decentralization of the investment decision process. It's, we live in the age and times when it's not just one investor making that crucial decision, li life and death decision for a startup. Uh, it's all of us carry that knowledge that can uh, contribute to making a sound investment decision. And it also sound um, advice for the startups on their journey to grow. And we can all be at the end of the day, LPs. So kind of in uh, implementing that philosophy that that's what's behind the impact collective uh, process as we speak. Uh, if, if, if I can just add to what Marta says and Uni says before, I, I, I mean, like I just have like literally the study case uh, for, for this. So I, I think the point of democratizing the knowledge uh, and avoiding the biases really uh, is really meaningful, especially on the sector that I'm working on right now on climate technologies. So um, in Asia, especially in, in my home base in Indonesia, we don't have that mature market yet on climate technology, on you know, circular economy solutions, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes when we talk to our local investors, we don't really have a clear pathway and grounds on you know, what are the comparables, how does the industry looks like, uh, what are the tractors and everything. So having this community driven um, uh, conversations and also like in, in impact investing really help, especially the way uh, that, uh, that I know you guys are uh, providing the platform for it uh, transparently and also uh, very collectively. It gives us a lot of um, different insights and uh, different perspectives on how we can approach uh, and to you know um, be the pioneer in this emerging market because we can't just um, correlate or compare directly with the market in US and Europe, right? It's usually not the same uh, landscape. So that's why having more um, democratized knowledge and people passionate in the issues and also involved and transparently conversing on that really helps us in uh, our current uh, investment processes. I think that's one of the uh, key that I want to highlight from uh, Martha and the email point. That's such a great comment, Jonathan. I definitely see that. I mean, from last year, one of the big or recurring comments that we got was how people didn't feel so alone in their mission anymore. <laughs> I think because all of us are so used to working in our in our little silos that sometimes it's difficult to see who else is also working there unless there's there is something that brings everybody together so that we can not only share knowledge and exchange but also connections 
offer, you know, ask and offer opportunities. Um, and it, all in all, like it's been, it's such, but it's been such a wonderful um, thing to see grow. <laughs> Even this year, just the different evolutions and partnerships that we are seeing, not only between, you know, investors and partner organizations with the impact makers, but between impact makers themselves, uh, who are working in complementary industries and are really looking at the synergies that they can help and and um, what they can build for APAC, I think has been really rewarding. I don't know if anybody. Oh, yeah. We should, we should add that we put a lot of emphasis on the entrepreneurs' well-being and their mm -hmm. mental health, and we yes. really, really, really take care of that. Especially in those times, in the COVID nineteen times, it's so easy to let yourself go on those fronts. But we want to kind of make sure that everybody's okay. Yeah, agreed. I I definitely think that. The program has brought a human touch to the work that we do as well, um, that I haven't seen in a number of other projects that I'm working on. So that's been really rewarding. I don't know if Jonathan or Uni have any comments to add on that. Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, you know, uh, when you think about the investment process, <laughs> It's very brutal and it's very humanly kind of like process, right? But then like here in Impact Collective, as we brought into, uh, I mean, we brought the community, you know, involved into the whole process and we create, we actually boosted the interactions between the community members, the, between experts and entrepreneurs and between the uh, public sector and the private and those kind of like, you know, cross sectoral collaborations that we actually boosted out. That actually gave a lot of like human touches within this you know, um, pandemic situations. And it's really interesting that we started our program uh, at the midst of the pandemic, you know, <laughs> the, the September 2020 was the first edition of our um, program and it actually- And it wasn't planned. It, it wasn't <laughs> it just planned. We, we actually, we never expected that. So we, we uh, planned this program from uh, late uh, to, 2019 and at the time we never know that we we couldn't flew uh, fly and we couldn't actually you know gather together so at that time we thought that this kind this is a kind of like a you know world tour kind of thing so we will just you know visit all these agents uh, startup cities and then meet all the entrepreneurs and we can create this a uh, kind of like a really great crew uh, membership kind of community then you know everything should change it right after uh, the spring of the 2020. But we survived, and uh, our community actually proved that uh, you know this virtual uh, network, even if it's a virtual, but then like you know with the same goal, the same same values that they shared, um, they can create a really great human touches. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, Jonathan. Speaking of human touches, I'm not sure if this is relevant to the conversations, but um, joining Impact Collective has helped me to explore some of the, you know, uh, new connections within the same industry. So I've invited Charlotte and also some of the uh, people from Impact Collective folks to speak in our events. And I would have never met, you know, you guys uh, without the connection. So I guess this is probably hopefully can you know ease the pain of not joining another conferences and uh, meeting offline and making that connection so at least we have that connections um, to some extent here virtually so yeah. i think the connections are the most valuable thing that everybody carry not only the impact makers not only the startups but everybody carries out of this program because yes it's great to get a nice investment and sure everybody kind of is after the price but at the end of the day, it's meeting those people and, you know, finding not only potential business partners or collaborators, say, in Bangladesh, but also finding friends that you, once we can travel post-COVID, that you will have somewhere to, you know, crush on someone's couch, hopefully. <laughs> Looking forward to that, for sure. Definitely. 
Actually, there was one comment that one of our impact makers from last year told me. He said that despite circumstances, this was actually the most connected and the most networking he'd ever done um, in, in his career because of the scale of the number, like the, the community that we have focused or really prioritizing impact, you know, and um, since we are all uh, kind of uh, together, it does offer opportunities to break down silos and really explore how we can collaborate. I mean, Jonathan, thanks again for the invitation and thanks for coming here. Um, you know, we, I, we're very proactive in trying to see where we can come in and participate with each other's events and build up capacity or offer opportunities where there's a gap or there's a need for it, or there's an opportunity around that. So that's been really, really nice to see as well. Um, and already that kind of answered already the second question that I had, which was like, why is involving the community important for impact investing? Yeah, all in all, um, I, I, to summarize, I guess it'd be that it's important because not only do you get potential partnerships for your business, but it goes beyond that, right? It's really a support system, a support network that can that can connect you uh, beyond borders and connect you to like minded people who are trying to make a difference. So that's that's been neat. Um, so this, I'm going to turn the conversation a little bit more now towards um, like the design of it. Like how do we actually set it up? I think many people people who are thinking about maybe doing the same thing or, or joining uh, might be curious around that. Like how can you design community engagement into investment activities? So um, for this, I think I'm going to let Marta and Uni maybe, uh, you know, jump in and talk about how we built up the system itself, maybe starting from the tech perspective might be good, or we could start from the community perspective, whichever you think is, is better. I think Uni? we can start from the community sector and then I can yeah, sure. explain a little bit of the tech side. Great. R right, so how we, how we build the community, hmm. It's a very interesting question and it, 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 it's a never ending story because we're still building the community. Right now we have what, almost 1500 members on our community platform, which by the way, I, I put the link into the chat. So definitely check it out and join us uh, there. Um, it started out just by reaching out to people within our networks, like putting together our own networks and re uh, posting, reposting, inviting people that we know have the expertise, the knowledge, but more importantly, inviting people who have the interest in impact because we have, yes, we have the impact makers who are, I guess, the core of our program, but we also have the experts who uh, offer them the expertise through office hours and also are very crucial in the voting process. But we also have the community voters and the community voters are a very interesting group because they consist of people who are not necessarily experts per se in the traditional sense of that word, but are just people who are very enthusiastic about impact, are very interested uh, in the impact sector and would probably like to get involved. So there's a lot of uh, people either working in corporates who kind of are looking for a new meaning of life uh, or students who want to be that change in the world, but just don't know where to start. And we are offering them that platform to be there. Uh, we also uh, have obviously our wonderful team that's kind of like the glue of the whole uh, community. We make sure that everybody is on board with everything. And we also offer the platform, which uh, Uni will talk about in more detail. Yeah, well, thank you, Marta. So, uh, yeah, we have a very, really a variety of the community community tiers and members. So, like, we have uh, different roles and uh, different um, types of the engagement for each uh, community member. So, as Marta said, we have um, multiple different layers. So first of all, we have expert system. So the experts are the ones who actually um, give out the mentoring sessions or some or uh, sector, sectoral um, knowledges or their, their, their industry insights, kind of like, a, you know, uh, 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 they're, they're kind of like a guru of uh, for uh, the entrepreneurs. 
and uh, the community voters that we have are more a wider sense of the community members who are basically interested in uh, this impact making business and the ecosystem. So they can be uh, conscious, conscious customers, or they can be um, um, some, you know, entrepreneur to be, or they can be a member of a startup uh, where they actually, you know, building something for their uh, their future. So a lot of different backgrounds of people are working together as a community voter to add their voices over their market or their industry or you know their uh, some of their um, um, in, uh, personal needs to be turned out to the you know new next model of the uh, um, shining businesses. So um, they can have their own voices. And also we have um, entrepreneurs, we call them uh, impact makers. Uh, so they share all the progress that they are making uh, during the journey. And also they, um, they, they, they share uh, the uh, actual uh, field stories of each market so that, you know, the public sector or um, other players of the um, ecosystem can also listen to and catch the insights uh, together. Um, and also we have the partners who actually, you know, um, uh, nurture this program together as a kind of like an operator or, you know, helper or assistance um, to give out. So um, Ufuna and uh, the Ventures are one of those, you know, uh, key partners who actually uh, operate this system together. Uh, so behind that, we actually integrated um, really, really, um, uh, well-structured technology. So we know the, the, the startup industry and we know that uh, this is not a kind of thing that we can actually do manually. So we implemented the online uh, community uh, system. So that actually have the community tokens, which is economic, uh, economic symbol and the other uh, is the voting systems and uh, the position system where, you know, different roles or different tiers of the community members can clearly see that, you know, who there are and also who uh, they have to talk to kind of thing. And also we allocated um, a lot of different uh, rights and governances to different tiers of the community members so that the community itself can act as a, you know, a single organization. So uh, for that, we uh, implemented a bit of the blockchain technology. So this um, token system that we, we invented is the vote and thanks. <laughs> and the two are kind of like a, a different types of, of the token. Uh, so vote is for the voting. So anyone who has the vote actually um, can um, cast their vote for the startups who can be the next, uh, you know, a portfolio of impact collective fund. So um, they can be a part of the due diligence process process uh, with this token voting. Um, so we allocated this vote token to all our community members. So the uh, community voters of course, they have their own vote tokens and experts have their own vote tokens as well. So the two groups are contributing to the due diligence process. So it's not a decision so that made by like hands pull of the uh, investment committee members, but it's a decision made by the thousand different community members. Um, and the thanks token is really, really interesting. So we know that um, um, you know, um, making the continuous um, community engagement is not a kind of like an easy thing. So we, we thought that, you know, uh, implementing a, a little bit of economics, socioeconomics onto the program. So um, this thanks token is actually directly linked to uh, the um, 
community uh, fund interest. So uh, when when the fund, which is the you know the, the investment fund that we actually allocate uh, deploy the capital into the startups, uh, the fund gets the uh, the returns. Uh, we automatically assigned a certain percentage to the community. So that community pool is actually also converted in, into the thanks token holders. So this thanks token is given to the contributors who actually um, actively gave out the, um, the, the advices or help or insights to the startups. So the startups who participate in Impact Collective, they, um, they grant, they, they give out their thanks token to the experts or community members um, who they, they want to appreciate. So uh, this is more like a, you know, a kind of like a symbol for the appreciations between the community members. And also these appreciations can also, uh, can be uh, referred as the, uh, the, the, the amount of the uh, contribution, amount of the uh, uh, commitment of theirs. So uh, this way we, you know, calculate how much of the commitment they actually made and uh, we also reward that commitment uh, with the um, economic benefits, right? Um, like it's a long, t long, um, long time um, plan. If you really, really want to get exited out of this, you know, thanks token, but this kind of like a, you know, a systemic um, design actually uh, gives not only the uh, philosophy kind of like thing that you are um, um, contributing to a better world, but also it's a, you know, very, very solid and uh, uh, trackable um, symbol that you, how much you actually, you know, um, engaged in and contributed to. So, uh, yeah, so not only just make this a, a total movement of the community, but also we have this kind of like, you know, technical measures um, to uh, support those actions that to be behind. Thanks so much, Uni. I, I think this feedback mechanism, the systemic design is really interesting because, okay, so on the one hand, right, all experts, community voters, committee, all the different people that have to vote tokens, um, vote for teams and the top 10, um, at least for this year, are the ones that then move on to the due diligence process to receive investments, right? In addition to that, there are other funding opportunities um, like fast track investments or partner investments um, that can be done through the platform. But most of the time given by the experts, um, you know, that uh, impact makers can connect with uh, experts such as Jonathan, um, you know, it's their hours that are given freely. Um, when people have time, then they'll show up at the open office hours or the speed dating to connect with these impact makers. And the fact that there's a, there's a you know, a reward system at the end that um, feeds into the investment fund and like takes a portion of the profits and redistributes it, I think is really neat and really shows that, you know, we're trying to build something that's benefiting everybody. Um, and that um, hopefully we'll, we'll shake things up a bit. <laughs> yeah, this is so yeah, really just a, a whole new concept, you know, like mm -hmm. sharing the carries out to the community is a, really a big decision making. And mm -hmm. it was really a new thing for all our um, LPs, the fund investors. So we had mm -hmm. to actually, you know, persuade them that this is a really a good, um, um, good thing. <laughs> that they can offer so that, you know, the community will also uh, pay back, you know, like with, with a better commitment and with better network to throw out and also um, mm -hmm. the, 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 the active engagement to give out the rear, you know, um, office hours and the rear mentoring kind of thing. So this figures that the, mm -hmm. the, the people that we have as an expert group, they are really, you know, um, wonderful wonderful people and they are very very successful stories they have their own successful stories and uh if we wanted to invite them as a kind of like a contract based kind of like a relationship 
I think we never had them all, but because of this kind of like, you know, voluntary um, engagement and also um, giving them a bit of ap appreciations and proper uh, contribution system um, that they can actually, you know, open up their minds. And it, this is not a kind of like a mandatory mm -hmm. thing or a contract based relationship. Mm -hmm. So uh, they can freely, you know, offer uh, on their pace and on their, right. yeah. No, I think this point actually that you're mentioning, how it's like you do it at your own pace is really important. And it's something that I know Marta also mentions quite a bit. Um, like the when you go through the Impact Collective program, it's a bit your choose your own adventure, right? So we offer a different, like a number of different activities, but it's up to you whether you're an impact maker or uh, one of the experts or, you know, community members to join what you're available for or not. Uh, Marta, do you want to comment or add anything to that? No, I just wanted to add that that metaphor comes from the Indiana Jones books. If anybody read them, they, they're, they're the Indiana Jones books where you have to choose your own adventure. Like if you think that he should cross the bridge, go, go to page 45. Uh, and that kind of replicates what's happening here, uh, like you said, on Impact Collective as well. Will, whatever your role is, you decide how much you're engaged. You decide who you're interacting with. You decide how much you give and how much you take from the community. And uh, yeah, and, and that kind of freedom, I think, is what attracts a lot of people. I just double checked and we have almost 150 community voters for just this year. Uh, so that must be something that brings people to, to the table. Yeah, um, i super glad to hear that, that we have 150. Uh, for those of you still thinking, just go and do it. <laughs> um, not only will you see uh, like uh, what people are doing around the, around the region, but you'll get to see, like get to know them because they, you know, we, 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 we take this pretty seriously. I mean, obviously involvement, I think is, it's a bit like the ocean, it comes in waves, right? Depending on how busy you are in your personal life. Um, but one interesting thing that we've seen is that people do stay um, for now. Like we're we're looking to see how we can continue this this growth in in the future. I don't know, Jonathan, if you have any anything you'd like to share around around your experiences or any uh, things that you'd like to see with the program. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I I think one of the only uh, challenges that I have is that we don't have. Uh, longer sessions, but I, I, on second thought, that also is impossible because I, I really wanted to have more time to meet all of these people, and from all the people that um, that I met uh, on the platform via direct chat, uh, via the ask and over, and also the even the water cooler sometimes. I'm not sure why it's called water cooler. I guess if it's like <laughs> office spaces, you go to it water is. cooler just to chat about anything. Um, yeah. but we, we can have that kind of kind of weird connections, and I actually met um, one of the uh, very interesting business model they use, uh, like last mile delivery journey using you know uh, uh, non-motorized transport like bicycles, but powered with um, you know electric batteries. Those, those kind of things, I didn't know that they exist in Indonesia. I've never heard of them before, and I actually got to meet them like last week because of the Impact Collective platform and they are reaching out. So I guess, um, yeah, as what Marta said before, I, I want to highlight that again, that probably um, in terms of my capacity, my own capacity as an expert, I wouldn't say I'm like, I'm the best in the field, not really. But um, in terms of creating that meaningful conversations and connections, it really helps uh, to be facilitated through the open community and because we choose who we want to talk to and meet um, I guess that's that make it easier to you know really have allocated time to converse and disturb like one two hours on your own terms that really helps in my experience at least yeah no I think I mean something that you highlighted too you know we're, we're all learning as we go um, I mean, these are still pretty emerging fields, right? And the technologies that, like the way that we use technology to accelerate the SDGs, like uh, there are many different applications to do it. And we, you know, like we're by no means expert in every industry or how technology can be applied to solve this, but we want to 
we want to know what's happening and, you know, like uh, potentially explore what are opportunities that we can connect you with um, or, you know, uh, help to either connect back to an investor or in my, in my uh, capacity, I connect back then to like UN partners that we have and any city governments. There are opportunities. It's just about how much you want to put into it. Um, I, we're, we're running a little bit short on time. I don't know if there are any questions in the chat. Um, but uh, for me, at least, I would like to bring up one remaining uh, question for all of our speakers, which is, um, what are you expecting as a direct result from the community? What would you like to see uh, in the years to come from the program? So I think Jonathan, you answered, you answered it a little bit, but if you want to expand on that, you can. Um, whoever can just jump in whenever they have something ready. But I know for me, at least, I mean, you know, as uh, maybe I should give a bit of context from Wafuna's perspective. So my, my organization, the World Federation of UN Associations, we've been around since 1946. So like basically when the UN was created and we represent civil society, we've been really trying to um, strengthen the work of the UN by involving people uh, from different uh, walks of life and different sectors, right? And so this program has been such a, such a wonderful experience to see how we're all connecting despite uh, challenges in connecting in person. And um, I would like to see, you know, uh, not only a whole bunch of successful startups that have gone on to set new industry standards, but also have this community grow and have a really like a branding of like, uh, you know, by the region for the region. Like this is a community of people that, you know, we're, we're on the ground working for this we are uh, representing lots of different sectors and we're like super committed to accelerating this um in this region and uh you know connecting people to opportunities so i mean if we can get to like a thousand oh a thousand um, ten thousand or a hundred thousand uh community members in like five years i think that'd be awesome uh but you know we'll see how how that goes uh what about you guys <laughs> I guess on, yeah. on my side, uh, jumping into what uh, I mentioned earlier and also what you just said, I guess um, the process of building this emerging market in Asia is not easy, definitely. And as one of the ecosystem player, I guess long term, I hope I'm hoping to see more uh, process of democratizing the knowledge and also the engagement uh, with all the ecosystem players so that we can support each other. Sometimes we are focused on our impact makers and cohorts and startups. We, we forget that we also need that kind of connections and you know, uh, capacity building, making that uh, context relevant to each other within the same industry. So um, hopefully uh, going forward, uh, if the community can get bigger and also invite more people in different walks of life, that will be very helpful. And hopefully one day we can have like one giant conference where everybody's there and you know make the ultimate awesome uh, gathering <laughs> we will meet in a island in in thailand and dance around the fires sounds amazing nice uni marta any yep go ahead yeah well uh for me definitely um um the the goal, the, um, the, the last picture that I'd love to see from this community is that, you know, uh, we definitely we, um, uh, define the, um, the impact investing in a new way with all these community voices. And it's not only for the impact collective fund itself, but also uh, if we can create a, a whole bunch of different funds working towards uh, to this, you know, uh, the, the, the shared goal together would be really great. So we're gonna uh, experiment a lot uh, for the um, fund side of the collaborations as well. So probably, you know, the community would need fund or the community contributed fund, kind of like a new concepts can be uh, spring out. Uh, and also the utilizing the, the tokens, the thanks tokens 
we might have a, a new allocation of different types of the, you know, um, token-based investment as well, uh, if it goes wrong. And <laughs> yeah, so those kind of like, a, you know, a lot of uh, different types of the um, democratized way of the uh, in, uh, impact investment uh, experiment, we uh, would really, really love to see, especially from the proposal from, uh, you know, by the community and by the region and by the local, you know, uh, impact players. So that's that's really kind of like a, you know exciting thing that I can um, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Uni. Marta. Um, yeah, kind of tapping into what what Uni said. Uh, I'm maybe I'm being too naive or too uh, I don't know. But a bit of a dreamer, but I want this to inspire a new generation of uh, real impact makers. And by impact makers, this time I mean not startups, but people, young people in our society that will have the courage to take decisions into their own hands and share their passions and their knowledge to really create differences uh, around the world and really change their their societies, their environment, their communities for good, because the change really starts with us. And I think people have the capabilities to do it. They just need that little push. They need that encouragement. And I do believe that Impact Collective can be that little push for them to, to, make, to step up and, and be the, the great leaders that they all can be. Wonderful last words. Thank you so much, Marta, Uni, and Jonathan for joining us today for this session. Um, I think that I would like to thank everybody, first of all, for joining. Feel free to go ahead and click any of the links inside the chat to join our platform, connect with us. We're nice people <laughs> and we're always open for a discussion. Uh, feel free to join the water cooler discussions and, uh, you know, join on on the fun. And with that, I would like to invite our team to stop recording. And um, we will probably be here for another maybe five, 10 minutes.